Hey, so this video is going to be about spherical projection, light linking, and flipbooks. So I've been figuring out how to do spherical texture projection, and I thought it was quite an interesting one to share. So um, let me grab the middle there. You can see here there's, there's three point lights here, a red, green, and a blue for each of them. and by their powers combined, <laughs> uh, it forms an RGB image, which can then be spherically projected using an Omni light into the scene. Pretty cool. Pretty useful for loads of different use cases. Um, the way it works is you've got three point lights. One is blue. See down here, the light color is only emitting blue. One is green. One is red. And each one of them uses a separate material light function, which is just a material, just create a material. Uh, three times, um, and each one needs to be like set like this. So you just create a pixel normal WS. Just you know, just just search for it there. A reflection vector log lat to, to UV into your texture sample, which in my case is a HDR image in JPEG form uh, of a museum interior. And then what that will do is it will spherically project the, the, the UVs onto the material. And then if you use that material in your light function, it will project out the light of that image, which is really freaking cool, I think, anyway. Um, the, other, the other thing that you can do here, if I come over here, oh, actually, let me just show one of the, one of the limitations. Uh, if I add in a directional light here, um, what that's doing is actually not very much because I've already fixed it. You can see that the secondary uh, light bounces are still affecting it slightly, um, but not that much because I'm using light linking here. So if you go into your objects, all of the objects are, have, cha have different channels. If I search for channel. So by default, every light that gets created, like this default light, gets added to channel zero. So now I've disabled uh, channel zero uh, from all of these objects. So they only get channel one, which is what this light is set to. So if I add in, if I add, if I add the, the ground floor to channel zero, this is what happens with the lights. So this is one of the limitations. If you add, have lights in your scene, it will affect the, um, the output. So um, yeah, just one to, one to keep in mind. Uh, one of the other things you can do here is if I add in an exponential fog, you can see you can project light through fog. I don't know how to add in different colors into the fog. If anyone knows, uh, drop a comment and I'll, I'll pin it. If anyone has a solution to getting light to show in the, in the fog. But uh, yeah, you can use a rec light. And in this case, that's pretty cool. It's, I, mean, I mean, you know, there's tons of applications that this could be useful. Um, I'll just show how to create a BP. So you can create a blueprint actor, drag in your lights and just do exactly the same thing. And then you've got a blueprint. Um, it's pretty straightforward really, isn't it? I think. Um, and then you've got a blueprint that you can just alt click to drag around and put wherever you want in your scene if you want multiple placements. Pretty cool. And lastly, the last thing that I wanted to try and figure out was if you could do this with, if you could project light in it with an animated texture. So this is a flip book that I generated in Embergen, which is a fluid simulation software, which is also very, very cool. Um, if I go into the, the um, scene here, this is using a light function material, which again, it's just a material. Now you have a flip book node here and the number of rows that you're using in your flipbook. Mine's 10 by 10, 10 on the X, 10 on the Y. Um, texture coordinate for the UV tiling, 1-1. One, one. Time period, uh, I think the default set to 1, which you can then multiply by a number if you want to, to, um, to increase the speed of it. Uh, so that to 2, doubles the speed. But 1 is the, whatever the frame rate is that you had set originally. Um, that goes into your flipbook. And then the UVs go into the texture sample, which go into the emissive color. So hey, that's a flip book. This was definitely not made to do this. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't work. If I just grab my uh, flip, if I grab my flip book smoke material and throw it onto this cube, you can see 
the difference. So, you know, flip books for the win on this one, I think. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool. Right, go back and turn off the exponential height fog. So the, the, the whole reason why I bothered to figure out how to do this thing arise because I've been doing a lot of mid journey and Bali, uh, Dali 2, Bali, Bali, a lot of Dali 2 um, AI testing. And I've been using it for a variety of different things, which I'll do a video for in the, at some point in the future, I'm sure. It's pretty useful for, for game dev. You can use it to generate like a concrete texture with some moss on it, um, and then feed that into something like substance to make it tileable. Uh, there's tons of different uses for it. It's really, really cool. Um, but I, because I've been doing this AI stuff, I got recommended a video by Those Six Faces, uh, which where he basically creates a 360 panorama, panoramic image of um, a scene, which, which uses only the ambient occlusion um, data, and then uses those in, uh, in some AI that he's using. I, I haven't actually tested this particular one, but... Um, what it does is it must be using the ambient occlusion as guidelines to generate things. And then what he does is he paints over it using the AI. I, I don't know how it's done exactly. Maybe maybe there's some manual work in there as well to fix it up. I assume there is because of my tests. It's not as easy as I as I hoped it would be. Um, and then he feeds it back in, projects it uh, into the world using this uh, this method here, or, or, or perhaps another method. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what he's doing. But um, I wanted to know how that would be possible, so I went off on a, on a YouTube journey and went off and fi went off to go and try and figure it out. So um, yeah, I mean I've I've um, added some links in the description to the the channels that I found useful in figuring this out. Uh, you might find them useful too, uh, especially Ben Cloward's one. Um, he shows a, a, a technique on how to do this basically, and. I found it extremely valuable. Uh, so basically, I learned how, <clears throat> how to do the spherical projection stuff into the image, to the um, into the shader here. And his panel is an absolute goldmine. So um, go and check it out. The guy, the guy is definitely a genius. He, there's so many things you can learn there about shaders uh, for both Unreal and and Unity, actually. So yeah, go check it out. Um, yeah, hope that was useful. Cheers.